Good evening, everyone. Would you stand to your feet? I am Minister Dennis Thompson. And I'm here to open up service with you tonight. It's a glorious evening. It's a special time that we are gathered here that we can invite God in to have his way up in here. 
First of all, I want to start off with a scripture. I'll be coming from Psalms 95. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads as thus. Oh, come let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is great God. He's the great God and the great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. And his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Let us raise our hands to the Lord tonight. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Oh, God of God, we welcome you into this place tonight. We invite you here. Please come in and have your way. You know exactly what to do. You know exactly how to do. You know exactly when to do. We need you tonight. You are the potter and we're the clay. We want you to come on in here and mold us. Let no flesh glory in your sight, but you do what needs to be done here. In Jesus' name I pray. Bless the words of the speaker when they don't fall on deaf ears, but they'll enter into the hearts of men and women anywhere they might be listening, and it will prick them and want them. To, they'll be saying, what must I do to be saved? How can I get that? How can I have that? Lord, do your thing. Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody, to the Lord. Salvation and, glory. Salvation and glory. I dare you to sing it. Honor and power, Honor and power. Unto, the Lord, our God. unto the Lord our God. I don't care what everybody else says. The Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, He's wonderful. Yes, he is. he is Put it in your spirit. Let's release it in the atmosphere. Everybody to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Salvation and glory. Honor and power, everybody. Honor and power. Unto the Lord our God. That's it. Make it a song for your heart to sing. For the Lord our Yes, the Lord our God. Yes, the Lord our God. Say the Lord our God. He is wonderful. Where are the altos? Come on, altos. All praises to the King of Kings. Yes, and the Lord our God. Where the soprano singers? Come on, just sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the tenors, come on. With the voice of victory. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory.
of Jesus. Shout to the Lord tonight. Come on, give God praise. Everybody, if you believe he's a wonderful God, come on, stand on your feet. Come on, y'all, let's do better than that. Give God a big praise tonight. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Find your two or three people, love on them tonight. Tell them it's good to see you. Come on. David, keep that going, man. I feel that tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes, God. We're going to get everybody on, the, on this side if we can. Let's get everybody on the same side if we can. Amen. Come on, God. Move tonight. Anybody looking for hope tonight? Looking for a word tonight? Come on. I feel you, God, tonight. Hallelujah. Woo, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come on. Come on, y'all. Lift your hand and worship tonight. Come on. I feel, I feel the Lord tonight. Let me get everybody on one side if we can. Come on. That's what we're everybody. doing. Let's go. We're one family tonight. Come on, y'all. Yes, God. I feel you tonight, God. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Honor and power. Let's get ready for the word tonight. If you're watching online, we're in here. We're in worship tonight. God is in this place tonight. We're Greater Life Church where our mission is to reach people where they are and love and lead them to a greater life. We're honored that you're watching online tonight. Do us a favor. Will you tag and share with as many people as you can? If you love your church, if you know that we're standing on the word, don't be embarrassed to share the word of God with as many people who may watch. Y'all, we're well over 200 people every week in Bible study. Give God praise for that. We've come a long way, y'all. Let me say that again. We've come a long way. Over 900 partners, y'all. We've come a long way. Give God praise. Over 500 active. We've come a long way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I feel that. Lift your hand. Come on. Woo, God. Thank you, God. Make it a song for your heart to sing. Depression is breaking in this room tonight. Fear is breaking in this room tonight. Come on, some of you had a long, crazy day. I know. Co-workers, supervisors, life has been tough. But you made it tonight. God has something for you tonight. He is wonderful. Come on, y'all. Sing that. He's wonderful. We're the altos. Come on, altos. All praises. All praises. To the King of Come Kings. Come on, y'all. Let's worship tonight. Yes. And the Lord our God. Come on. I'm so proud of y'all. Look at all these people in Bible study. We're the soprano singers. Come on. Just sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. He's wonderful. Come on. Touch somebody and tell them he's wonderful. Come on. Come on. We're going to break chains tonight. Break chains tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel God. Salvation and glory. Yes, God. If you're watching online, come on. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. Everybody, everybody. Come on. Come on. Tonight. Make it glorious, make it glorious. Now lift those hands. Come on, lift those hands and give God a, a hallelujah over this place tonight. A hallelujah over this place tonight. A hallelujah over this place tonight. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated tonight in the presence of our great God. I want to welcome all of you here tonight, particularly those here for the first time, those who are returning guests, and all of our new partners who recently joined our church. Come on, give God praise that our new partners are in church tonight. Listen, Bible study is important. We're a Bible church. It's one of our core values at Greater Life. We believe in the scriptures, that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction. 
and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God, the woman of God may be perfect, complete, thoroughly furnished to do every good work. All right. We believe in the Bible. And isn't it good to know that we're growing by the word of God? Amen. The church is growing. We ain't got to compromise now. We ain't giving out no flat screen televisions and we're not eating hot dogs and barbecue every Wednesday and Sunday. But people are hungry for the word of God and we're super excited about it. Listen, tonight, y'all, I'm going to yield this pulpit. I am grateful uh, to be a church where we, you all have matured enough where I don't always have to be the voice. And if we're not developing voices, uh, our church will cease uh, to be what it needs to be when the main voice cannot stand. So many churches fall uh, because it's so personality driven. I understand you love your pastor and you want your pastor to share the word, but if the pastor needs a word and if the pastor is down and can't bring the word, who's going to stand? And the church shouldn't have to depend on one man. Listen, Moses needed Aaron. Come on, somebody help me tonight. Jesus needed the 12 apostles. Paul needed Timothy, right? God always worked in duo, in group. And so we will always be a church that works in community. We will work together. This is not a one-man show, and I am not your God. Come on and somebody say amen. And so I want to develop our leaders. We're growing another campus. May the 9th, can y'all believe next month, we're launching a brand new campus in the East Lake Chula Vista area. And it's going to be absolutely explosive, y'all. I want you to remember every announcement I made. I want you to remember every time I stood up here and told you uh, that, that that church was going to be planted. And I want you to know how big God is. Uh, it's been prophetically spoken that that campus would grow fast. And so we're grateful uh, that as we develop campuses, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me tonight. And a few people believe me, but a few people don't. Uh, but I want y'all to know that I hear God. I don't have enough energy, y'all, to be launching campuses if God hadn't spoken. I'm in this for no competition. I'm, I'm in this for souls to be saved. And so I'm excited for our East Lake campus. Some of you are going to transition to East Lake with Pastor Nate, and some of you are going to remain here and uh, make this your main location. But as we flow into a Sunday experience, uh, I'm going to ask those who live in that community to make that uh, church location your home. We're still greater life. You're just at a different campus. Amen. And so we're going to build that campus and we're going to make sure that we have the right leadership on that campus. And uh, I'm going to make sure a good representation of Jesus and my heart is going to be on that campus. And we're going to see God do great and mighty things. And we'll go on to the next place up north. Amen. Uh, so I need your help. I'm proud to have a spiritual daughter who's been with me for seven years. She came to our church, and many of you know her story. What a great journey. Uh, she knew Jesus coming into greater life, but life uh, dealt her uh, some difficulty, and she went through some trial and tribulation, and we loved her back uh, to her rightful place in God. Amen. We did. Over there in this little house on Derby Street, and she showed up every week, every Sunday, uh, even when folk were saying, who's that girl sitting back there bent over with that scarf and bandana on her head? Who is that? Y'all don't worry about who it is. Let's pray that God changes her. And thank God we didn't give up on. Uh, come on now. That's why we don't give up on people. The folk you talking about the most are the folk God going to raise up and have to lay hands on you one day. Tell somebody, you got to be careful who you talk about. Because it's that person God will raise up to be a blessing in your life. And so, listen, Pastor Nate is pro-rehabilitation. Uh, I've been called to broken people. I've been called to people who feels like life can't uh, happen uh, to them, but yet it does, and yet they need to be healed. Uh, there are many leaders here who are broken. Church hurt is real, y'all. And so I'm grateful to be a, a leader who can help you get back in the game and develop your gifts in Jesus. It's not over yet. And so Minister Sedale Pendleton, y'all, is going to bring the word tonight. Come on, clap better than that. Clap better than that. She's one of our ministers, and I'm welcoming her to the pulpit tonight. Come on and give her a hand. Give her your amen as she brings the word of God. There you go, Dorna. All right. Teach tonight. Good evening, Greater Life Church. I don't know about y'all, but today was a day for me. Um, anytime uh, I'm on assignment and we were taught that there's hell week that comes with that 
And when I tell you, I don't know if it was hell week, but it was hell day today. I almost couldn't make it here because the enemy was trying to bind me to where um, someone else wanted to, me to be. But um, I know that God placed me here in this moment, in this time. So let's get ready to get some Bible study on. So um, I am Minister Sadell Pendleton of the Greater Life Church here in San Diego. I say the and put emphasis on that because, I mean, come on, y'all know what it is. The Greater Life Church. And I want to give honor to God first, who definitely is the head of my life. He placed people in my life like my spiritual father, Pastor Nate. And I want to give honor to you as well. And to uh, Lady Z and Carter, I love y'all. I pray for y'all daily in honor in my fellow clergy family and to all of you in the house and online this evening. So we're in a year of living on the edge, an everyday God encounter. You could be seated. We want to encounter God this year, and doing so in our Bible studies, we are currently asking the Lord to teach us to study. Now, last week, Pastor Nate helped us in how we hear God's word. He told us that God is not silent. He is always speaking, but we need to learn how to hear him when he does. Romans 10 and 17 said that faith comes by hearing the word of God. So you need to be listening for and to God's word in order for you to activate your faith. Pastor Nate also shared that there are different ways to hear God's word through the Bible, church services, Bible study, sermon replays, radio, podcasts. There's a plethora of ways that you can hear God's word. And it's beneficial if we find our ear for God in a way that helps, helps it to stick and to be used in daily life because as we also learned last week, we forget about 95% of what we hear after three days. So by Saturday, you'll only remember 5% of what I say tonight. But we can improve our hearing. and The tools aren't enough. You have to be ready and eager to hear God. Deal with attitudes that prevent us from hearing God. So you have to drown out the noise and be open-minded and not prideful or preoccupied. We learned that confessing any sin in our lives helps us to hear God, letting go of mess and what we want out of the Bible, humbly accepting what is written in God's will for what he wants us to learn in our time with him. We ought to take notes on what God is saying. Then we can refer back to be sure to follow up or add it to the answered prayer list. We ought to believe that what he says is golden and not drift away from what we heard. Now, that's, that was a scripture from last week, Hebrews 2 and 1. We learn to act on what we hear. So don't just read about it, be about it. And that was James 1 and 22. And when you listen and not forget, but put into practice what is written, we will be blessed in anything we do, James 1 and 25. Now that we learned how to hear God's word from Pastor Nate last week, let us dive into how we are to study God's word. Now, how many of you in here read on a daily basis? Raise your hands. That's a lot. Y'all read on a daily basis. So just what is some things that you read on a daily basis? This is interactive, so I want y'all to talk back to me. Emails. Text messages. The devotionals. Anything else that y'all read on a daily basis? The Bible. Your math book. <laughs> yes. Social media, that's good, that's current. So why do you read those particular things? To be informed, to gain knowledge, inspiration. What are some instructions that you follow daily? What are some things that you do throughout the day that is instructions that you do on a regular basis? I'll throw out one thing brush your teeth, shower, 
Huh? Wake up. Okay. Eat. Yep. Anything else? Pray. Okay, so I have bathing, brushing your teeth, clocking in and out at work, right? Because these are some things that we do on a regular basis. These are instructions that we follow. When you want to get paid, you got to clock it in and out for work, right? So reading daily, following instructions, clocking in and out, bathing and teeth brushing produces a desired effect. You learn something new when you read. You receive a paycheck when you clock in and out. Your body and teeth are clean due to brushing and bathing. A desired effect occurs. Take a look at your outline under Roman numeral two. It says how to read God's word, right? Somebody want to read that scripture that's underneath there? Revelations one and three. I see you. Revelation 1 and 3 reads, Happy is the one who reads this book and obeys what is written in it. Mm. Y'all heard that, right? Happy is the one who reads this book and obeys what is written in it. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm happy when I'm all washed up. My teeth are brushed, smelling all good, pearly white. My mind is sharper than before from reading things. Now, the text here in Revelation is reassuring us that this book is the book of life, and obeying what is written in it gets us and keeps us happy. Now, I did a little digging on this scripture, and what I found was that happy sometimes means blessed. So blessed are the ones who read the word of God and do what it says. If you are blessed just reading the Bible, then why are we so iffy about digging into it daily? In order for you to be happy or blessed, reading the word, you have to know it. And you know it, and to know it, you have to what? Read it. But it's not enough to just read something and be happy and blessed. You have to read God's word daily to get the desired effect. Faith without works. It's dead. Faith without works, reading and doing it daily. We already talked about how faith is activated when we listen to what God is saying and doing it. But we we can't forget about the daily piece of it daily reading of his word that's what grows our faith muscle so you it's not enough for you to just pick up the word we're like okay you need to read your word daily picking it up and just looking at it every day and putting it back down does nothing what what substance did you get from that you just checking off the list this scripture is not telling you to check the list off When it's telling you to to read the Bible and read it daily, it wants you to do more than just pick it up and look at it. And we're going to talk about that a little further. It takes a look at Deuteronomy 17, 19 of the Living Bible. It says, the scriptures shall be his constant companion. He must read from it every day of his life so that he will learn to respect the Lord his God By obeying all of his commands. It's not enough to just read the scriptures, but we have to do it day and night. Stop removing words from the Bible. Come on, I know I ain't the only one. Because, no, you know, there's certain words in there. You you like, he said, ask and I shall receive. But we take that out of context because it's something that we want, right? Okay, God, you said ask. We don't don't think about the thing we're asking for because sometimes that's not in God's will. But we we take it out of context sometimes. Ask and thou shalt receive. Seek and knock. And yes, it says that, but there is context to that. And studying the word will help you understand what that context is so you're not just reading the word. You're going to get some substance from the word. Now, as a minister, I'm telling y'all, I take words out. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to stand in this pulpit and tell a tale. 
when I needed the fit for me, I'll quote a scripture and leave a piece out. And then I get convicted because God's like, that's not what I said. Go back and read that again. I read my Bible, but then God is like, but do you read from it every day? I read my Bible daily, and then God's like, but did you learn to respect the Lord by obeying all that you written, all that was written? And that's where I get convicted, like, mm -mm. I read it. I didn't apply it. Okay, God, I got to go back and do that again. You're right. It's like, thank you. It's like when you're, when you're being taught anything. If you're like me, I need to actually physically touch things to learn it. Like, you can't just read stuff to me. You can't put stuff on the projector and tell me stuff, and, I'm, and it's going to stick. I literally have to touch it and do things myself in order for it to stick for me. So I call that a hands-on approach. I gain a different perspective, a different respect for the task when I actually have to put the work in to do it. Right. So if it's not enough for you to just read the word, you have to put some work into reading the word for you to get something out of it. Now, there's some folks who don't mind delegating, which is fine. But after you yourself went through a process of consistency, understanding and application in your own life. So you can't delegate somebody else to do read the Bible when you ain't doing that yourself. You can't tell me to read my Bible daily, and you're not. Yeah, you live in your, your life on the edge without his instructions. And this is why a pastor always tells us not to eat at everybody's table. Are they at the very least reading his word daily and carrying those instructions out? Whoever is feeding this into, you know you get upset with something that didn't happen here because I'm going to just call the roll. We get in our feelings. We get mad at Pastor Nate or one of the ministers or somebody, and then you don't come to church. And you go online, and you listen to somebody else because you ain't fooling with greater life this week because you mad. And so you, you get on there, and you, you watch another people. I mean, you, you on there watch. I'm not going to say no names because I don't want to offend anybody. But you watching other people sermons. You ain't even clicked on greater life because that's how mad you are. But do, do you understand who those people are pouring into your life that week? Do you know them? Do you know if they even know God? Are they studying that word day and night? That sermon that you're listening to, did they toil over that sermon? Was it Holy Ghost sermon? Or was it something for they wanted to hype? Because I don't know about you, I was almost pulled into something like that in the beginning of my journey. Because I wanted God so much. Because I knew where I was in my life, I couldn't pull myself out of it. Nobody else could pull me out of it, and I needed God to do it. So I was gravitating to whatever had the title of God. And this one time, I don't know if you remember this, Pastor Nate, um, there was this prophet on TV, and he was, he was going in. I'm like, oh, this is good. Like, this is real. And I'm, I'm looking in the Bible. This is right, he said. Then he asked me for like $50. And now I'm telling you, I was so eager for God. I'm like, shoot, I, I'm trusting and believing God for something. I got to give him this $50 because I'm, I need God to do it. He said he's talking good, and he's saying if I give him this $50, that God's going to give me what I need. And I, I called Pastor Nate. I'm like, I don't understand. It was something they was teaching, and I didn't understand. And I called Pastor Nate. He said, that's the first time he told me, do not eat at everybody's table. You know, I'm pouring into you. That's, that's, I'm connected. I was already connected. And it was okay that I was searching for God, but that prophet that was on there, he just wanted money. He didn't care about my salvation. He didn't care about my healing. He didn't care about that. He didn't teach me that God loves me anyway. He didn't teach me that God had forgiven me for the things. He just wanted me to give him money. He was reading from the book, but there was no substance in it. So we got to be careful who, who pours into us. Do they know God? Do they, are they at least praying every day? Are they at least picking the Bible up and trying to determine what it is God is trying to give them for God's people? 
So I know y'all probably be like, you know, Sadell, you teaching us how to read God's word. And so far, you told us that we happy and blessed when we do so, if we obey what's in it. We understand that we must read the word every day so that we can learn how to honor God, obeying all that is written. But how do we accomplish that? I'm glad y'all asked me that. So here are some suggestions to help you read God's word daily to strengthen your knowledge of how God wants us to live our lives as he instructed, applying them as often as we read. So we're going to go over to the suggestion. This is in your outline now. So how often should we read God's word? I'm going to say that one more time. How often should we read God's word? Daily. So one, happy is the one who reads this book and obeys what's written in it. That's Revelations 1 and 3. I'm giving you scriptures. You should be writing it down so you can meditate later. How often should we read the word? I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to get you. Pay attention. How often should we read God's word? There we go. The scripture shall be his constant companion. He must read from it every day of his life so that he will learn to respect the Lord his God by obeying all of his commands. Deuteronomy 17 and 19. Here's some study strategies. Number, letter A, you need to read it systematically. Daily, as Deuteronomy 17 and 19 told us. Read one or more chapters back to back. Keep track of where you leave off so you could pick it up next time. Preferably the next day because we reading daily, right? So don't just pick it up one day and you leave off and then walk away and don't go back to that. Go back the next day. What was it that I read the next day before you move on to something else? How much did you understand what you read the day before? Systematically. What does systematically mean? Systems, right? It's a, it's a set way of something, right? It's, it's almost like consecutive. Reading it systematically. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. No matter what. It, it, pick a day. In the morning. In the afternoon. In the evening. Pick a time. Continue to read. If you keep to that, that systematic way of reading will just come to you. If you create a system for yourself and follow that, that's how you systematically read the word. Now, there are three basic steps to studying God's word. The first one is observation. What does it say next to observation? What does the text say? Observation is an act or instance of viewing or noting a fact or occurrence for some purpose. That's what observation means. It is an act or instance of viewing or noting a fact or occurrence for some purpose. What does the text say? Literally, what does the text say? When you read it, what does it say? Again, not taking anything out and not adding anything to it. What does the text say? Let's look at Revelations 1 and 3 again. It says what? Happy is the one who reads this book and obeys what's written in it. If observation is what the text says, then, come on. How are you going to observe this text? Somebody want to, what's your observation of Revelations 1 and 3? Anybody? I hear you. What you say? Happy if you read the Bible. Yep. Anybody else? You got your hand up right there in the back in the gray. Experiencing God's power working in you. From obeying his word, you get to experience his power. That's what you observe from this reading, right? Come on, next. You build a relationship uh, because of the consistency. You, first of all, you, you're blessed. Mm -hmm. So you have, you, you, you're blessed when you're reading so you're going to be blessed with, with joy and all those things. And then, you know, when you, you, when you learn to submit, 
But you build, you build that, you build that relationship through the word of God. Amen. Anybody else? Happy is the one who reads this book and obeys what is written in it. What did you observe from that text? And I'm teaching you to study, so we're going to learn right here, right now. You. Say it again. You will learn a lot from the Bible, and it will make you happy. Amen. That's real good. What did you say up here? Being obedient to the word. That's what you observe from reading just this short little passage, right? You didn't take nothing out of it. You didn't add nothing in it. But you, because you read it, you observed, this text is telling me that as long as I read this book daily, I'm going to be happy. If observation is what the text says, then interpretation is what the text means. In my study time this morning, I learned that in reading any body of text, readers go through a series of stages to compile and extract the meaning. So stage one is the author's intention. Stage two is reading and deciphering language. With the Bible, you may need Hebrew, Aramaic, things like that. When you get a little bit further along the line. Stage three is formation, how the text is arranged. And stage four is the tone and classification. Now, in order to interpret the text, we have to link the text to the creator. That went over y'all head. Okay. In order to interpret the word of God, you have to link the text to the creator. That's your 5% that y'all remember after three days. God doesn't lie. God is love. God is a provider. He's a healer. He's a corrector. Knowing that about the author helps us to understand, to interpret what it is he is saying to us. So you can't interpret the word of God if you don't know God. Okay, y'all could catch that on a replay when you go back. Like language... Text can only mean something if there is a relationship between the two individuals which makes the process of communication possible. What did I just say? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's relationship. So we, if we're in relationship with God, there it is. It's easier to understand. Absolutely. Good job. It's easier to understand. You can't, it's like having a friend. And you don't, you, y'all just met. It's a friend y'all just met. Well, you know, friend. I'm not talking about significant other friend. Come back with me. Friend. And you just met this person. You can't really have big expectations for this person until you get to know this person. And in order to get to know the person, you have to be in relationship with the person. See, sometimes we get relationship, we only look at relationship in one context, and that's intimate relationships. We have friendship relationships, parent-child relationships, co-worker-boss relationships, pastor-minister relationships, relationship. But without that relationship, you don't get an understand. you won't have an understanding. So for us, it's beneficial if we're in relationship with God, everything in this Bible will make sense to us. Because in the relationship with God, he's going to give us all the revelation we need. He's going to give us his interpretation of what's in this word. So we don't have to add to or take away from it. Because we're in relation with him. If you're not in relationship with God, nothing he has written will make sense to you. Let's take a look at Revelations 1 and 3 again. It says what? Happy is the one who reads this book and obeys what is written in it. So what have you interpreted from this passage? What is God's intention? His language. What's the language formation he has here? What's the tone in this text? Is it firm? Is it sad? Is it angry? Is it happy? Is it matter of fact? So to 
interpret the text, you have to pay attention to those things. What is the intention behind this text? What is the language formation behind this text? What is the tone in this text? Is he mad, sad, angry? Is he giving me a direction? Is he correcting me? Those things is what you need to pay attention to to be able to interpret the word. Application. How does this work for my life? How can you apply the scriptures that you read? Anybody want to just throw some? How can you apply the scriptures that you read? How do you apply this? Because we all should be doing that. So there should be a few answers like spitting out right now. How do you apply? <laughs> yes, sir. Set your actions according to the word of God. Yes. And also, when it uses like he or they, you switch it to I and me. Come on. That's good. Anybody else? Okay, I'll take a few. I'll be back to ask some questions. Okay, so we're going to look. The Bible is a book of instructions, y'all. The whole entire Bible is a book of instructions. So applying it to life is following those instructions. So let's look again at Revelations 1 and 3. Happy is the one who reads this book and obeys what's written in it. Somebody tell me how they can apply this scripture to their life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Anybody else? Reflection, good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you for participating. They try and leave me out on the limb. <laughs> um, yeah, happy is the one who reads this book and obeys what's written in it. So how I can apply this to my life is, well, I have the scripture. I got to have a scripture available, right? Got to be able to get it from somewhere, right? Yeah. Book, my phone, Google, something. I need to have something to apply to. Yeah, yeah. And I'm only happy when I'm in that book and reading from it every day. Yeah. If the Bible is instruction for life and I read it every day, then I can't feel like I'm, I don't know which direction to go. Because God gives us those directions. We just have to be paying attention and listening and learning and leading, um, doing what he leads us to do. Everything is in the word. So here's some study strategies. This is the part I've been waiting for. Number one, read patiently. You have to be patient with the text. <laughs> some people are going to be upset with me at this part a little bit. That's why it's important to choose a translation that works for you. Now, people like to debate a bunch of, oh, man wrote the Bible. I don't get into debates with the Bible. I believe there's different interpretations, and it's helpful for me to study the word. Because um, the King James Version back in the day was not working for me. Just not. It was not. The message version is perfect for beginners because Eugene Peterson loved God, but he was practical in his writing. People like me who come from the streets appreciates the message version because it's raw and it's unfiltered and it sounds like me when I want to give the word. So Eugene come and cut throat and tell you like, sit down, you're not listening to God and you're hard headed. That's what I want to say. And Eugene Peterson makes it possible for me to say it that way. So then when y'all looking at me crazy, I'm going to tell y'all go to the message Bible. I'm not being messy. Eugene Peterson told me I could say it like that. But the message, so it's raw and it's unfiltered, but it's still God's word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Minister Me uses several versions. Being called to preach and teach requires a level of studying that also requires patience. Yeah. Because some words depict something else in other languages in other contexts. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15 of the Amplified Version, you can write AMP on there because you can go back and look at the Amplified. It's, it's good, too. Study and do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of God. Be patient with yourself. 
get into a posture of knowing you don't know everything. Learning is constant. So be patient with getting it because you ain't got it. Everybody don't have it. I'm still learning as a licensed and ordained minister. Our lead servant learns too. He don't know everything. He bring it out here like he do and we be clapping and he don't know everything. He's still learning. Your first step is to open the book and start. You can't get none of these things that I'm telling you tonight if you don't open the book and start. God will open your eyes to what is in there. But rushing the process is dangerous. You could misinterpret something you read by rushing. You could provide false information to another believer or a person that's looking to believe. So it's more beneficial to take your time when reading scripture. Reaching out to others you trust who rightly divide the word or at least consults with God regularly that's even more beneficial, and it helps with being patient while studying the word of God. Now, <laughs> no. Okay, King James Version. Okay. That's a spooky spiritual book. I'm, I'm just going to put that out there. Coming up as a kid, it was the thousands and the arts and the, those. I didn't know what that stuff meant. So I strayed away from it. Because you need to have something relatable. You need to have something that stimulates your mind. We all don't think the same. Some of it, like I said, I'm more of a hands-on. Some people are auditory learners. Some people could read them, them uh, what is those auditor, audio books? I cannot, for the life of me, sit and listen to a book and get any context from it. My mind starts drifting off every other place. I just, I need to have the physical book. And I lick my finger, turn the page, highlight, you know, things like that. But you have to be patient in that process. I know you come to Bible study and you might see somebody and you want to be where they're at, but there was a process for them too. So take your time when you're reading the word. Even in a Bible study, if you go back and you want to check out what I'm saying tonight in your own Bibles, in your own time, be patient with that. Maybe there might be something that I hit on that you didn't quite understand, but if you ask God, he will, he will show, show you that. But you have to be patient with yourself in your studying. Read prayerfully. Pray before, during, and after your reading. I am not going to lie. I, I don't always pray before because I just jump right into it. It'd be, sometimes I'd be so on fire ready to just, oh, because the Bible, if you really want to read it, if you really do read it, it is a cool read. I'm telling you. There's some stuff in there. You'd be like, what? Oh, they was tripping. They said that. Jesus flipped the table over. I flipped the table over yesterday. I'm cool. If Jesus did it. I must can do it, right? Because this is what I mean by, like, don't be, don't be adding stuff and taking stuff away from the Word. I'm just kidding, everybody. Don't do that. But I do do it sometimes. But I, I oftentimes forget to pray before because I'm just so eager. And then I do realize I'll get stuck or frustrated. And then I'll be like, so you didn't pray. You didn't ask God to do nothing before you got into this book. Yeah, it's not enough to just read it. You got to get into a posture, Sadell. You know that. So sit, commune with God, talk to him like, okay, what do you want me to read today? Am I going to Matthew? Am I going to where, where I'm going? Oh, I don't know. Let me go to a Bible plan so I can start somewhere. But pray before, ask God, God, open my eyes. Show me what you want me to see in this text. None of me and all of you, God. I, I got things going on in my life, and I will make this text fit my situation. But I need you to be in my situation. So praying before helps you gear yourself for right before you get into that thing, and then the Holy Spirit takes off, and before you know it, three, four hours that went past, and you didn't been in the Bible all that time. Pray during, too. You get stuck, something you don't understand. Ask God for the revelation. God, show me. What, I don't understand this word. Most of the time, he'll be like, go Google it. I let somebody create Google for a reason. Go ahead and Google that thing. But ask him in the, min, in the middle of it. Anytime we, We're allowed to talk to God whenever we want to. 
So when we're in the study time, that's the perfect time because we already sitting and supping with him. So we got his undivided attention. So if you get stuck, hey, pops, I'm going to need you to come down here. And what does this word mean? And he'll give you the revelation for it. And then after you read it, because we talked about the application, you want to be able to get something from that. So after you read the word, you know what, God? I sat here with you for this amount of time. Um, this word resonated with me. Can you help me to apply what I've learned today? Can you help me to better understand what I read tomorrow today? What I read today, can you help me tomorrow remember that and walk in that? After you pray, it, we, again, we can, we can talk to God whenever we want to. After you read your word, going to him, because I just feel like God, when we get ready to read and we pray like, God, I'm about to read your word. He be up there dancing like, come on. And then you be like, God, I'm stuck. I need you to help me. He like, come on. I believe he just be so excited and happy when we say to him, I need you for anything. It doesn't have to be when we, we need him when we're in trouble. But God, I'm reading your word and I don't understand. Can you come and help me? God, this word just pricked my heart. Can you help me understand why it pricked my heart? Asking him the questions, praying to him before, during, and after reading will help you to interpret the text, will help you to remember the text, but more importantly to know that God is in it with you. Pray the scriptures for yourself and for others. My favorite verse is Psalm 126 and 5. That has been my guiding scripture since I went through all of the stuff I went through that brought me to Christ in the way that I'm with him now. My own personal relationship with Christ was built based off of Psalm 126 and 5 because I was so broken. And all I could do was cry. I couldn't pick my head up. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I could There was, I literally, I was malnutritioned. They had to take me to the hospital and give me all kinds of fluids because I was just done with life. My situation knocked the wind out of me so bad that all I, all I could gravitate to was God. I didn't want to be bothered with nobody on this earth because to me, everybody on this earth had failed me. To me, everybody on this earth had left me out to die. To me, everybody on this earth didn't love me. And I, I knew because I heard about the man, right? Heard about the man. And I, and I heard about the man through my grandma and making me go to church. But I didn't really know him for me. I knew him for everybody else, but not for me. So during my process... I was, I was so broken. I'm like, God, I need you. I, there, nobody else here can do anything, please. And he came for me. So Psalm 126 and 5 says, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. A person who is going through, I pray that prayer over them. Lord, your word says that Minister Bianca is crying. Your, Minister Bianca is crying, and your word says that her tears aren't wasteful, that those tears that she is crying will reap a harvest of joy. Lord, heal her sick body. In the book of Isaiah 53 and 5, to be exact, you said that by your stripes we are healed. Lord, my child is battling. Your word in Isaiah 54 and 17 said that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. And every tongue which rises up against her in judgment, you will condemn. And then when I do those prayers over my life and over other people's lives, I feel super empowered. Praying those scriptures because his word never fails. So if he said that the weapon won't prosper... And that what is said against you, he will deal with. Then that's exactly what's going to happen. So keeping those scriptures on your heart helps us to pray in the moment to God for help using his words. I think the best way is like you throw God's words back at him. That ain't disrespectful. I used to think, I'm like, what? Tell God you said. Like, that is so rude. I would never tell my mom, boy, you said. Because she would give me a pop. But God isn't, he's not like that. We're, he actually wants us 
Because if we remind him of what he said, then he know we know what he said. <laughs> it never fails. So I could take all that to the bank. Any words that is in the Bible that I am praying for myself and over a person, I don't really actually need a whole bunch of faith to do because the word said it. And if the word said it, then it's truth. So then I can just go by the truth. Well, um, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I see you weapon, but you ain't going to prosper because the word told me you won't do that. I'm sick in my body, but by his stripes, I'm healed. The word told me that. So I don't feel it right now, but the word told me that by his stripes, I'm healed. So I know my healing is coming. He didn't say by your stripes, you heal tomorrow in three hours. In a month. He just said by his stripes were healed. So just hold on to that no matter what. Because we like to rush, th rush things. Okay, God, but when? When by your stripes is, am I going to be healed? Huh? Sir, come on. I, I'm been waiting. I need you to answer this right now. God, like, I ain't got to. I don't have to. I created you. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> by my stripes you healed. Take that to the bank and you go ahead and be okay with that. Where were you? That's real good. Number three, read repeatedly. I know this is like cliche-ish, but you read it over and over again. If you don't understand anything in life, you repeat. You go back and you say, okay, I don't get this. Let me go back and see what, what did I miss? So why, we do that in everything else in life, but when it comes to this word, we skim out on that because we don't like what's written in it. It don't fit our agenda. So I'm going to just read it one. I'm like, I don't like that verse. I'm going to go to the next verse. No, nah, it's probably something that God wants you to know in that verse. So it's not that you don't get it or understand it. No, you need to sit with God a little bit more in that verse and keep reading it over and over and over. And then when you're tired of reading it, read it again. Frequent, frequent reading of passages taps into the cognitive processes that helps us to learn new things. Neuroscientists say that reading, actual, reading actually strengthens your brain. So rereading a Bible verse or scripture repeatedly provides lifelong lasting effects in the matters of our brain and our heart. Because the word strengthens us in our hearts and in our minds. So if we continue to keep reading it daily over and over and over, we're just getting strengthened in our minds. We're just getting more strengthened in our hearts. We're just getting more strengthened in our spirits. Reread it. Then don't get frustrated with it. There, go back to the patience thing. Be patient. I don't understand it. It's okay. God's like, it's okay. Read it again. I still don't understand it. Read it again. I still don't understand it. Go get you some cereal. Come back. Read it again. Reread it. The more, we, the more we interact with the text, the more fluency increases and comprehension improves. So if you just read it and then walk away from it, you'll never get it. So did you, did you ever want it? Because if I want something bad enough, I'm going to do anything by any means necessary to get it. And it shouldn't be no different with this word. You want God to do something for you that's bad enough? You're going to go in this word and ask God. Where in this Bible do it say, help me not strangle these kids? Where in this Bible do it say, okay, let me. Strengthen. It's more fluency. It's more comprehension. Thank you, sir. Number four, we read imaginatively. When we read other books, we create a world in our minds, right? We imagine people and we imagine sounds. We imagine emotions and smells. We imagine voices. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I read the Bible, some of, them, some of them scriptures, I swear to, I try to make God be a big, tough God like me, like no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I feel like he, you know, he, no weapon formed. 
And I'm like, yeah, no weapon formed against me shall prosper into me. It's my imagination. But the more we read it, we use your imagination to make that thing live and make it fun. The Bible don't have to be boring. It's really not. It's some savage stories in there. I'm trying to tell y'all, they went through a whole lot. But I use my imagination. To some people, the Bible is boring. Let's be honest. Because y'all wasn't always interested in reading the Bible. <laughs> y'all wasn't. I see you right there. You, you wasn't. You still ain't, huh? You try and figure it out. I'm going to teach you today. It's okay. Some people think it's boring. King James Version, that thou art and other phrases in that Bible just didn't move me. It was like calculus to me. And I never took calculus. I had basic math. But I stayed there because I was scared of calculus. That, that was too much. Boring. Or statistics. I don't, that's, that's too many numbers. I don't, I don't want to do that. But if you vary the Bible translation you normally read, and this is where I said earlier about using the message version, you can find one that you understand. The King James Version is more scholarly. The message is more hood, in my opinion. And the NIV is laid back. I, I read the NIV. I'm just like on the couch like, and God said, let there be light. Yeah. That's how I'm with the NIV. King James, I'm just like, God said, let there be light. And I'm scared. And then the message Bible is like, God said, flick the switch, bro. So I'm on some, yeah, I like that one. Flick the switch. I mean, I can still give it to you how it's supposed to be, but flick the switch. Turn the light on. That's how I look at it. Now, when I read certain versions, it helps me to understand what I'm reading. And then I could create pictures in my mind because now I'm reading from a version that's interesting to me. It's okay if your Bible is boring, pick another version. It's a whole bunch of them out there. If you use the Bible app, you have way more at your fingertips. Another way to read imaginatively is to consider reading a paraphrase. Now, I have study Bibles, and in those study Bibles, on the sides of them, they, like, they break down what, what the scriptures is about. So, so I be, you, that's not called cheating. It's called using resources, okay? The study Bible has paraphrases all down the side of it. So scripture, that scripture, those who sow in tears are reaping joy, it could be paraphrased something like tears are seeds, and like seeds, they're water, and they grow into something else. In this case, joy. Again, y'all ain't got to take my word for it. Just go back and read it for yourself. Imaginatively. Anybody in here read the Bible and think that they know um, what the Hebrew boys look like in that furnace? I'm hot up here under these lights. They was in the furnace prancing around like there was air conditioning in there. Hot. But in my mind, I'm imagining like if it was me, I tried to trade places with them. I'm, I'm going to tell y'all right now, Lord. I'd have been like this, bell. Oh, I don't know. Get in the fire? I don't know. I don't know. Who I need some more mustard seed, faith, God, because you want me to get in the oven? Who? I, I, I don't know. So I imagine they was in there hot and sweaty, and this part right here was wet under their underarms, and they was. You hot, I'm hot. You hot, I'm hot. I'm hot. What we going to do? And one of them was like, God's coming. I feel like one of them was like, bro, he ain't coming. <laughs> he, 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 you said he may not come when, when, when you want him to, but he's always on time. What, what, what time is it? It's hot. It's real hot. But imagine, that makes studying the Bible fun too when you can Imagine like what it would look like. That that sermon on the mount. All them people standing around. I'm, I don't like all them people like that. I might have would have had to watch online. It's too many people. But I imagine that when he fed all those people with just little. I, I, I can imagine people standing around like, I know. 
he don't think he gonna feed all of us with this little bit of fish and bread. How many fish sandwiches he think he gonna make? Yeah, Jesus. I'm in an imaginary state like, um, I probably would have stole one of them fishes. <laughs> Me and David, we gotta eat, son. I took a, I took a fish, a bread, a son, and I, uh, Forgive me, Jesus. I'm just being honest. I imagine that if I was in their place, would I respond like that? And I wouldn't then. But when I got into the word to see that it was just the faith and the trust because they knew who God was, they didn't have to react how I would have reacted because they knew God. And now in this moment today, I know who God is. So, yeah, I would step in the fire and know that huh, he on his way someday. And even if he don't come today, when I get to the other side, I'm still going to be okay. Read it aloud. Read the text out loud. Don't be scared of it. That's your, your living word that God gave to all of us, and we can read it however way we want to. It's okay to sit on the toilet and read the Bible. I've done it. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with turning the page in the bathroom, scrolling in the bathroom. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're reading it daily. You got to go to the bathroom daily. Maybe use one. Okay, sorry. Read it out loud to yourself. Out loud. You got your word. Those who sow in tears reap in joy. That's, I, I literally paced back and forth in that season. Like, God, I, I, all I got is tears. God, I, 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 I don't understand how a harvest of joy is going to come out of so much pain. God, you're telling me it's okay to cry. My eyes is swollen. I look like a blowfish. Lashes is everywhere. You saying joy is going to come out of this? But he had to show me better than he could tell me. And he did. Because I cried so many tears, and my joy that came, the harvest from it, was that I got licensed and ordained as a minister in the process. My son, who didn't know God and swore up and down like that, one man ain't did all that stuff. Y'all, David was a really like, what? No. To now, my son travels with the pastor is here every Wednesday, every Sunday, Tuesday sometimes, Saturday sometimes. Gained a skill that he didn't have to go to school for. Know God for himself. All five of my, four of five of my children brought themselves to Christ. I didn't force them. They watched my process, them tears. So now I'm like, okay, God, you said the tears that I sow, I'm looking superficially at the tears that was sowed. But the tears was tear call, your kids is going to know God. Tears call, you're going to be licensed or ordained. You're going to do stuff you never could have thought you would do. Ooh, that blows my mind sometimes because when you in it, you cannot see that. I, that. People tell you there's light at the end of the tunnel. You're like, what tunnel, first of all? you talking about the light at the end of the tunnel. Where's the tunnel, sir or ma'am? Because I don't see it. But reading that scripture out loud, it built my strength to believe what was said. Those who sow in tears reap in joy. Those who sow in tears reap in joy. Those who, then, when I looked up, it was just joy. No more tears. So you can read it aloud. You can listen to an audio version. I told y'all about the I can't listen to audio. But you guys, if you're good with listening, go to audio version. They got that on there too. They even read to you. Now, if I could change the voice to sound like the way I imagine God sounds, I'd probably do the audio vision. I'd probably do the audio. I probably would. But I, I don't want Snoop Dogg reading to me in the Bible version. That is not okay. Rewrite the passage in your own words. 
So first you read it. Read the passage. Then you put it away. And then you try to write what you remember. Don't take a peek at it so those who sow in tear reap in joy. Okay. Those joy. Okay, that's all I remember. Those who sow in tear reap in joy. Those joy reap. Okay, something else is missing. Those who sow in tear reap in joy. Those who sow in tears reap. Those reap joy. Tears. Those. Hold up. Those who sow in tear reap in joy. Those who sow in tears reap in joy. It didn't take me long to get that scripture after I said it out loud a whole bunch of times. And then I wrote it in my own words because all I knew I was crying. I had tears and I knew I, need, I wanted joy. So I just had to apply it. Okay, I know the scripture says something about tears and joy. I just wrote that down. Okay, I know that I missed another pill. When I went and looked at it again, okay, reap. I missed reap. And it was all jumbled up, but it helped me to learn it because I knew what words were supposed to be in it. I just didn't know the way it was supposed to be in there. So I had the text. But it took for me to keep rereading it. And it took for me to write it down. And it took for me to go back again for me to actually get it. So I got up here, Dad, and I have to read that. I know that scripture, the back of my hand. And that's my go-to. Like I said, when people are going through, I know that's because that thing pulled me up out of the muck and mire. Rewrite it. Put it away. Go back to it. Because most times when you write things in your own words or your own languages, it helps you to retain it. All I have to do is read the word daily and do what it says to be blessed and happy. That's how I remember Revelations 1 and 3. Like, I didn't know the, or like the whole entire, but I'm like, I knew the context of it. As long as I'm in my word every day, I'm going to be blessed. As long as I'm in my word, I bet you y'all will remember Revelations 1 and 3. And I'm going to ask y'all when I see y'all around the campus, just so you know. Revelations 1 and 3 says what? Come on. Only Minister Tawana got it. Come on, one more time. Revelations 1 and 3 says what? Look at y'all. got a scripture that y'all already know already. Number five is read thoughtfully. Look for the structure of the passage. How has the author organized the context of the text? What is the setting, the backdrop in which it is written? So I, I go to school, so I do a lot of stuff on study.com. And it told me that the context could be, the context of reading things thoughtfully, the context could be historical, it could be physical, it could be cultural, or it could be rhetorical. In essence, it's, in essence, what is the author's frame of mind? So what is God's frame of mind for the Bible? Does anybody want to take a good guess? What's God's frame of mind with the Bible? Somebody, somebody said serious? What else? Yes, ma'am. Give her a mic. Pink. Oh, you said serious. Okay, serious. Anybody else? Go ahead, Educate. Sir. Educate. Yep. Anybody else? Inst instructions. Guiding. Good job. Yep. Love. Yes. Help. Yes. Hope. Yes. Redemption. Good. To be successful. Successful. In life. Yes, Minister Dennis. The things outside the text that influences its meaning is what we're looking for. What, is, what influences the meaning of the text? When we, when we read it thoughtfully, we, we put in things in the proper context of it. We're thinking about, we're not just reading, we're thoroughly gauging what's in the text. You could print it out, print out the text and use that printout to mark up, which now I write in my Bible. Anybody in here writing a Bible? Y'all remember back in the day it was like a sin to write in your Bible or something? Like, I, 
I, I feel like my grandma and them was like, you, could, you couldn't even touch their babbles, first of all. Like, it was golden. And I didn't understand why you couldn't touch them because they never touched them. So I didn't understand. Like, so it's just there. But I like writing them all. I have so many babbles. Ones that is designed for you to be able to write in because it's fun. It just kept me interested in reading the word. I can write like all things work together and I can write them in bubble letters and color all on the page and stuff like that. But if you print out the text, you can use it to mark it up and, and then look at it in a different context. Okay, I see this word and, I see this word but, and it keeps saying and, it keeps starting this out with and. Why does it keep doing that? For me, I'll Google, why is the beginning of this scripture starting with and? You'll be surprised at the things that Google will take you to. It's always going to route you back to the word. But to help gauge you in your understanding, print the text out. Highlight, circle, underline, get you a notebook, put words you don't understand, get the definitions. That's an effective way of studying the Bible. You want linking words, phrases, verbs, cause, and effects, stuff we learned when we was little coming up in the reading classes. That was applicable. That was one thing we went to school for that we really need to, we still use today. Ask questions of the text. What are questions? Questions is a sentence worded or expressed as to elicit information. Questions we learn is what? The five, four W's is the five. Who, what, when, where, why, and then what's the H one? How, right? Ask the questions of the text. Okay, God, well, who, who are you talking to? Me? Okay, talking to me. Sorry. Well, well, what are you talking about? When did this take place? Where did it take place? How did that happen? Them is questions that we should be asking when we're reading the word. That's how you gain more understanding. If you don't understand, there's the, I don't understand. What do you do when you don't understand something? You ask a question. Ask God, what are you talking about, sir? I, I, I see it, but I don't get it. And then you know how we like stuff right now. We don't want to wait. Call one of the ministers. Call somebody you know that reads the Bible. Ask them, like, I'm reading this. What does this mean? Why does this say this? Who is they talking about? Where are they going? And how the heck did that miracle happen? Who, what, when, where, why, and how? Ask questions of the text. Think about your text throughout the day. Those who sow in tears will reap and joy down. Just because I was in it, I was thinking about it all day. Every time the tear dropped, I'm like, those are so in tear, reaping joy. Those are so in And it helped. Honestly, coming from where I come from, I, it had to be God to do the things that he done in me. Because there ain't no way you could tell me to just, those who so in tear, reaping joy, and just be okay with that before I knew who God was and how powerful he was. And how much he can move things around that's way far out of my control. So thinking about the text throughout the day, if you just pick a scripture. Again, be patient with yourself. Don't try to learn all of Genesis today. It's not going to happen. Even in a week. You have to pace yourself. Be patient with yourself. And then think about that text throughout the day. This is my, my verse for today. How does this apply to what I'm going through today? How can I apply it to my life today? Can I apply it to somebody else's life today to help them through that? Think about it throughout your day. If you read approximately 15 minutes a day, then it said that you could read the Bible once a year. For me, ever since I became a licensed and ordained minister, I can't even read, I can't read no book without exegeting the text. It is so hard. That's why I don't read anymore. I don't read regular books because I'm getting to the first word, this first paragraph, and I'm like, but what do it really mean? Like, do this word really mean that? So I don't read books because I'm so used to studying the word and having to break it down and rightly dividing it that I do it in novels that don't make no sense. And I'm over to forget it. I don't want to read this book anymore. It's too much. I got, I got a dictionary to read uh, the coldest winter yet ever. Um, 
what, Sadell, what? I just need to know if this and really means and. Is this a continuation? So I, if you take your time and you read every day, take 15 minutes. Our Pastor Nate taught us five, five, and five. Five minutes of prayer, five minutes of worship, and five minutes of reading. Sometimes I do all 15 minutes of prayer. Sometimes I'll do like five minutes of prayer and 10 minutes of worship. Sometimes I'll do the whole 15 minutes and read my word. But I'm given 15 minutes throughout the day to God. At the very least, where I have a spot and a place and a time where it's nothing but me and him. So I'm giving him glory by my worship music. I have my hands raised up. I'm bopping all around. I pray, God, order my steps today. Bless my family. Bless my pastor and his family. Bless my friends. Bless my purpose. And then I go to the word, some type of Bible plan. And, and just see, what is God telling me today? What's the word of the day? How can I apply this word of the day to my life? Then I go back and study what I read. How do we read God's word? How do we study his word? We study it by reading it daily, by respecting and obeying the commands in it, by reading it systematically with them three steps, observation, interpretation, and application, and using study strategies to read patiently, to read prayerfully, to read repeatedly, to read imaginatively, and read thoughtfully. Thank you and be blessed. Come on, everybody. We're standing. Come on, give God praise for the word tonight. Come on, let's do. Were you blessed tonight? Come here. Were you blessed tonight by that word tonight? Are you better? Are you, are you? I mean, y'all stay standing. We out of here. Listen, man. Now, next Next time, y'all think it's got to be me teaching, y'all, no, just go back and watch this. Amen. Isn't that good to know that your church is raising up people who can stand behind this sacred desk? And I'm just as happy as I can be. It felt so good, sneak ahead, not to teach tonight. I just, I'm over there smiling, texting, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy, all right? Uh, great job. Under all the pressure of the day, God still used her in a great way. And um, thank you so much for that. For those watching online, uh, I thank you for tuning in both on YouTube and on Facebook. We're uh, preparing to leave tonight. I want everybody uh, to find a seed tonight. I want everybody to find a seed tonight. And the buckets, uh, EIT, Carter, if you would grab a bucket at the door uh, for me. And then, of course, I want to ask Sneakerhead if you would grab a bucket. And y'all just stand at the exit. I need everybody as you exit to sow. Let me let me sow here, uh, EIT. Uh, I want to sow into this ground tonight. Amen. Uh, Sunday morning, I need you to get to worship. Do me a favor. Will you invite three people to join you? We had 14 to join Sunday, y'all. 14 people join our church. The week before that, we had 17 to join. And it's just a miracle what God is doing. Do me a favor, invite three people to join you this Sunday. I'm doing a sermon Sunday entitled, I'm Tired of Settling. I need you to get here. Uh, numbers is where I'm going to be. We're going through the entire Old Testament the first six months of the year. And then we're going to get into the New Testament. God encounters in the Old Testament. And then God encounters in the New Testament. Listen, the Faith Room Meetup is next week, y'all. Come on now. Now, some of you have not purchased your ticket. If you can only make it one day, that's Friday night. Pastor Terry Brooks will be here. Uh, and then, of course, during the morning sessions, we have classes dealing with stress, classes dealing with boundaries. Uh, Dr. Ray Russell will be doing a class on finances. Don Cujada, Minister Don, will be doing a class on fitness. Uh, Evangelist Giovanni Oates will be teaching. Jonathan Lauder will be here from Atlanta, Georgia. It's going to be phenomenal. A Thursday night, Faith Room Got Talent, rep your city, rep your state. Uh, if you've been at a meetup, you already know. Come on, y'all. We have a good time. 
and so I want you to get your tickets uh, this Sunday, if you can. Tony's Fish and Chips will be uh, out uh, selling dinners, and after you leave, you don't have to go to Chili's. You can see Pastor Herman and Tony's. Amen. The women's event is this Saturday, y'all. I need y'all here. I believe it begins at what time? 9 a.m. Pastor Doris is ready. Her team is ready. I need you late. Where you at, ladies? I need you to get here. Change your hair appointment. Change it. Move it. Cancel it. All right? Y'all saying keep on. Okay, y'all ain't going to do that. Rick, don't, Rick said they ain't going to do that. All right, cancel it. But uh, I want y'all to get excited about that. Uh, that's all I have. I believe that's all I have. Anything? Yeah, no servant leader sit down this Saturday. And the leader said, oh, okay, that's fake. Or right, I know y'all happy about it. And uh, so we're going to chill out, Michelle, uh, faithful. We're going to chill out Saturday. The ladies are going to be here. Man cave is still jumping. I have not been to a man cave in four weeks, but man cave continues to grow. We got men being touched by God. I had a brother, let me tell you the power of God. I had a brother to call me at 5 a.m. this morning. He says, Pastor Nate, I want to go fornicate right now. But I am hearing the brothers in my mind. And I want you to pray with me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? This is somebody who was never in church, but want to give their life closer to God. And they're going to be here this Sunday. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't clapping loud enough on that. All right. So Minister Rose is going to close us out in prayer. Minister Sedell, if you would stand at the back, I want people to shake your hand tonight. And uh, y'all love on her and, and look at how God is blessing, uh, blessing her life. Amen. Pastor Derek celebrated a birthday, y'all. Pastor D is another year young. Amen. And uh, he came here jumping and happy this, today. So Pastor Tracy, I don't know uh, what's been going on. Look at him. He's still back there dancing. Hey, I don't know what y'all been, you know, but uh, that's grown folk. I love y'all. Come on, minister. Amen. I want to say thank you, Minister Sedell, for studying so that she can teach us how to study. <laughs> and we are happy when we do what, when we read the word and we do what's in it, right? Amen. So we should see a lot of people walking around here smiling. Because when I'm happy, I'm smiling. I don't know about you. So, Lord, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for what you taught us this, this evening, oh, God. We thank you for the vessel that you used, oh, God. God, we ask that you continue to be with us, and we bind all depression in the name of Jesus. We will be happy because we will read your word, Lord, and we will do what is written in it. Lord, be with us as we go to our homes, God. Help this seed to grow, oh God. Help us to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.